Agriculture has always been defined by the ability to efficiently harness power to cultivate land, harvest crops and manage livestock. For centuries, human and animal muscle were the main sources of traction power. The advent of mechanization in the late 19th and early 20th century introduced steam engines and later internal combustion engines, fundamentally transforming farming. However, the limitations of early tractors soon became apparent, particularly when working in heavy soils, wet grounds or steep terrain. Two-wheel drive vehicles, tractors, you know, often struggled with slippage, compaction and lack of pulling power. The development of the four-wheel drive systems addressed these issues, creating machines that could, could transmit the power more efficiently to the ground, improve traction and, of course, increase productivity. Well, hello everybody, you're very welcome back to the channel. And yes, I am back. Been off for the last month or so, just out of a couple of things that uh, I needed to get wrapped up on, a couple of projects that I have ongoing. Um, I'll fill you in a little bit more later on in the videos. Um, no other reason that I just needed to take that time to get those, get on top of those projects. But I'm back with a bang. Uh, it's the type of weather now to be making videos. It's the type of weather that people are going to be sitting in watching uh, videos like this. And today we're talking about four-wheel drive. And a day like today in the west of Ireland, you would definitely need a four-wheel drive system because it is absolutely atrocious. Anyway, without further ado, I'm not going to waffle on too long. We're going to get straight into today's video. And it's all about the history and the development of four-wheel drive systems in agriculture. So the story of four-wheel drive in agriculture spans more than a century involving early experiments, post-war innovation, the rise of articulated high horsepower tractors and the introduction of mechanical front-wheel drive and eventually sophisticated electronically controlled systems that we see today. This story traces the history and development of those systems from primitive beginnings to their widespread adoption in modern agriculture. So looking at some early experiments with traction in the 1900s. So the first decades of mechanized farming were dominated by steam traction engines and later petrol and kerosene powered tractors, such as those from the Fordson um, Hart Power International Harvester. These machines were heavy and primarily rear wheel driven, relying on sheer mass to achieve the traction. While suitable um, you know, on firm ground, they quickly bogged down in you know, hilly or steep uh, muddy conditions. Inventors began experimenting with ways to distribute power to all four wheels and in 1912 the Holt Manufacturing Company, who we all know later became Caterpillar, experimented with crawler tracks, an alternative to four wheel drive that improved flotation. Meanwhile companies like the Walter Motor Truck Company in the United States and four wheel drive uh, auto company, they were building four wheel drive trucks. The first known agricultural four-wheel drive tractor prototypes appeared in the 1920s and the 1930s. Companies such as Latil in France produced four-wheel drive forestry tractors which inspired agricultural adoption. However, the cost, complexity and lack of durable driveline technology limited its adoption. Most farmers continued to rely on four-wheel drive tractors paired with steel or rubber lug wheels that we would have seen back in the you know, in the 30s and the 40s. So looking at post-war innovation, then from 1940 to the 1950s, after World War II, agriculture faced increasing demand for mechanization, larger farms, especially in North America. So they need more powerful tractors to pull heavier, bigger implements. The limitations of two-wheel drive became more acute and experimentation with four-wheel drive accelerated. In the United States and Europe, surplus military vehicles, you know, equipped with four-wheel drive were sometimes repurposed for farm work, showing farmers the advantages of the system. Manufacturers responded to producing experimental models. Massey Harris and Minneapolis Moline developed early four-wheel drive tractors in the 1940s. And these machines were bulky, mechanically complex, and they demonstrated how power distributed to the wheels could reduce slippage, especially in heavy draft work. At the same time, articulated steering systems began to emerge. Instead of steering by turning just the front wheels, large tractors were designed with a hinge in the middle, allowing the entire front and rear section to pivot. This design was best suited to four-wheel drive because all wheels remained powered, traction was maximized. Early articulated prototypes laid the groundwork for the high horsepower tractors you know, of the following decades. The pioneers of four-wheel drive, so in the 1950s and the 1960s, so in the 1950s and 60s, that marked the first successful commercialization of four-wheel drive tractors. 
independent manufacturers in North America, often farmers and engineers themselves, pioneered the development of large articulated four-wheel drive machines. In North Dakota, the brothers Morris and Claude Steger built one of the first practical articulated four-wheel drive tractors in 1957. The Steger tractor was initially a farm-built machine, but its success led to the establishment of the Steger Tractor Company, which became obviously a dominant force in the four-wheel drive tractor market. Similarly, companies like Wagner and Versatile in Canada, they entered the market producing large, high horsepower tractors designed specifically for prairie farming. So just to take a quick break and just to explain a few things. So yeah, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I have been working on a few other projects and anyone who regularly watches this channel will know that I have been working on a podcast and yes, it's still ongoing. I'm still compiling episodes and I want to have about between 10 and 15 episodes before I release the first. I have six or seven of them done at the minute. I had hoped to you know, launch it sometime around the end of September into October, It'd probably be a little bit later, but I am working on that. And you know, it is, you know, it, it's still an ongoing project and I'm working hard on it and it is taking shape. Um, the other big project that I have been working on is um, the Agri-Motive store. So we will have the Agri-Motive store um, will be opening up within the next two to three weeks. So that will, the, the, the website is built, products are going on at the minute, and uh, the website will be going live within the next two to three weeks. So to start off to be about, you know, between 10 and 15 different products on it, and this will range everything from um, handy little multi-tools to um, uh, measuring equipment, micrometers, uh, vernier calipers. I'm going to have electronic or electrical testing equipment, uh, like multimeters, amp clamps, um, laser temperature sensors, and then I am going to start releasing um, special tools for various uh, various machines, various jobs. Uh, probably it will be more John Deere uh, related to start off because I have the blueprints for a lot of the John Deere tools uh, and a lot of stuff that is opened up to um, opened up the copyright that can be reproduced uh, without any issues. So I do have to be careful around things like that, but there will be tools and equipment coming online bit by bit we'll start off with 10 or 15 different products there will be lubricant section on it as well so i have teamed up with um a, a large lubricant company in ireland and there will be lubricants going onto the onto the site as well so that's agri motor store and it will be coming online very very soon and uh, you will be hearing a lot more about it um so if anybody's interested keep in touch and i'll let you know where you can find more details in Europe, different approaches were taken. Instead of large articulated designs, companies like ZF and SAMI, you know, they pioneered mechanical front wheel drive assist systems. These systems transferred power to the front axle via shafts and gears, creating part-time four wheel drive. These tractors retained conventional steering, but gained significant traction improvements. These two paths, you know, the articulated four wheel drive giants in North America and, you know, the mechanical four wheel drive in Europe with the find the development of tractor drivetrains for decades. So looking at articulated four-wheel drive tractors in the 60s and the 70s. So in the 60s and the 70s, saw obviously a rapid expansion of large-scale farming in North America, particularly in the Great Plains. Farmers, you know, required ever larger machines to pull wide plows, cultivators, and seeders. Articulated four-wheel drive tractors build this niche perfectly. So manufacturers like Steger, Versatile, Wagner, as we said, and later, of course, John Deere with the 7020 in 1969, and Case entered the articulated four-wheel drive market. These tractors often exceeded 200 horsepower, dwarfing the conventional two-wheel drive row crop tractors of the time. With equal size wheels and full-time four-wheel drive, they distributed weight more evenly, reducing soil compaction, and maintained traction through, through, sorry, traction through tough soils. However, these machines were primarily suited to broad acre farming and less practical for smaller European fields. Their high cost and large turning radius made them less popular outside North America, though they gained foothold in, of course, Australia and parts of the Soviet Union. So we're looking at the mechanical front wheel drive, so from 1960s to 1980s. So while North America embraced, obviously, the articulated four wheel drive route, Europe focused on mechanical four wheel drive systems for mid-sized tractors. Mechanical four wheel drive, Tractors had a conventional rear wheel drive layout, but with the option to engage the front axle when additional traction was needed. 
Sammy in Italy were a leader in mechanical four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive uh, technology as early as the 1950s, producing practical four-wheel drive tractors with equal sized wheels. ZF developed front axle systems that could be integrated into tractors from manufacturers like Massey Ferguson, International Harvester and Ford. And of course, by the 1970s, mechanical four-wheel drive was becoming increasingly common, especially as hydraulic front wheel assist systems gave way to more robust mechanical drives. Worldwide, mechanical four-wheel drive began gaining popularity in the 1970s and the 1980s. Farmers recognized that mechanical four-wheel drive tractors offered many of the traction benefits of articulated tractors, but with greater versatility. And, you know, obviously, and it had row crop operations then as well. So by the 1980s, nearly every major tra- tractor manufacturer offered mechanical four-wheel drive options, and the adoption of it obviously skyrocketed in the 80s. So looking at hydraulic and hydrostatic systems, so alongside mechanical solutions, some manufacturers experimented with hydraulic or hydrostatic four-wheel drive. Yeah, the, the systems, you know, they use hydraulic motors to power individual wheels or axles, offering flexibility and simplicity. Hydraulic four-wheel drive was especially attractive for harvesters and special equip- specialist equipment, where space constraints or variable traction conditions made mechanical shafts and practical self-propelled combines you know, forage harvesters, sprayers, and often applied front wheel drive assist systems that could be engaged when needed. Although less efficient and mechanical drive trains, hydraulic systems proved invaluable in certain niches, particularly where, you know, maneuverability or variable speed control was critical. Uh, and speaking from the experience when it comes to the tractor end with, with you know, hydraulic or hyd- hydrostatic four wheel drive, obviously, Everyone remembers or anyone who was involved with John Deere in the 70s and the 80s, you know, the 4000 series and some of the lesser models had the, you know, the, that famous front wheel assist system, the hydraulic front wheel assist system. Um, and when it worked, it worked well. Uh, it was it was a smaller wheel than a conventional four wheel drive wheel, um, hydraulically driven, um, worked well, but it had issues, you know. The biggest issue was controlling the oil flow to the front motors in respect of the speed of the tractor, um, the ground speed of the tractor, especially when there was wheel slip on the back and then trying to regulate the flow to the front wheels. So you nearly constantly had the front wheels going at one or 1.2 or 1.3 times quicker than the back wheels. And it led to a lot of you know, wheel slippage on the front and throwing muck up. And, you know, it was a little bit of a disaster in very wet conditions. It did work well in reasonably dry conditions. But uh, from experience, uh, yeah, it wasn't John Deere's best uh, best moment. Um, but it did offer great uh, maneuverability as far as four-wheel drive tractors went, or four-wheel drive assist tractors went at the time, because they had the turning circle, the maneuverability, of a a two-wheel drive tractor whereas four-wheel drive tractors at that time were obviously that the front axes were a lot more cumbersome um turning circles were a lot less uh with you know running shafts and that through um like front axles uh, to get that to get that lock but when you have hydraulic system well you're kind of unlimited you can put it wherever you want so yeah it was a good system one respect but it you know it had a lot of teething problems so obviously then you had an expansion into harvesters and other agricultural agricultural equipment so by the 1970s and 80s four-wheel drive technology was no longer confined to tractors combine harvesters forage harvesters beet harvesters sprayers they all adopted four-wheel drive to tackle muddy fields hillsides and heavy loads so class john deere new holland case ih all introduced four-wheel drive combines with powered rear axles to improve stability and reduce slippage Specialist equipment manufacturers in Europe developed self-propelled four-wheel drive harvesters, you know, for crops such as sugar beet and potatoes. In addition, four-wheel drive technology found its way into off-road agricultural transporters, forestry tractors, and even compact utility tractors used on small farms and vineyards, and of course, into quads and stuff like that as well. So modern four-wheel drive and modern, you know, mechanical four-wheel drive systems from the 1990s to present. So from the 1990s onwards, Four-wheel drive technology became increasingly refined. Advances in gear technology, planetary, final drives, and electronic controls made drivetrains more efficient and obviously a lot more durable. Modern articulated tractors such as the John Deere 9R series or the Case IH Steger series, which now exceed obviously six, seven, eight hundred horsepower, 
using sophisticated four wheel drive systems with equal size wheels or tracks. Mechanical four wheel drive tractors dominate the mid sized market worldwide with automatic engagement, suspension of front axles, torque sensing, and limited di slip differentials. Electronic systems allow trackers to automatically distribute torque between axles and even between individual wheels. This improves efficiency and reduces fuel consumption. Four wheel drive braking, anti slip regulation, automatic differential locks have become obviously standard on high end tractors. So, to conclude, the development of four wheel drive systems is in agriculture reflects the constant search for greater efficiency, traction, and productivity. From early experiments with steam traction, you know, to crude four wheel drive systems and prototypes through to the rise of articulated joints and mechanical four wheel drive systems to today's electronically managed drive trends, four wheel drive has become integral to modern farming. Looking ahead, the role of four wheel drive will continue obviously to evolve. Precision agriculture, automation and robotics demand even more sophisticated traction systems. Autonomous tractors and robotic harvesters will likely rely on lightweight four wheel drive or track systems to minimize soil compaction while maximizing maneuverability. Hybrid and electric drivetrains may enable new forms of individually powered wheels echoing the hydraulic experiments of earlier decades but with far greater efficiency. To sum up, the history of four wheel drive in agriculture demonstrates how necessity, innovation and technology combine to reshape farming practices. What began as an answer to slippage and traction problems has grown into a cornerstone of modern mechanized agriculture. And that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you've gotten to the end, I hope you got something out of it. And of course, as always, leave a comment in the comment section if you have anything to say about four wheel drive, four wheel drive systems and to say about the John Deere system in particular, if you've any experience of it, um, because I certainly do. Um, and of course, then not to slag John Deere off too much because they did introduce that caster angle you know, into the 40 series, the 50 series in the 1980s in the four wheel drive tractors that had a serious caster angle and they probably outturned most tractors on the market at the time. Uh, certainly the, the 2850 and the likes of them were probably the most maneuverable four wheel drive that was on the market at the time. Um, so yeah, and next week I will be back with another video and it will be about John Deere. I'm not going on too much about John Deere, but yeah, it will be a John Deere video next week. Um, thank you very much for watching. I'll see everybody soon. Take care.